Oh my god, it's so fast! Hello everyone and welcome back to Sonic the Hedgehog before the sequel, I Am One Wild Sheep. And today we're going to take care of Rocky Ride Zone. A very fast paced level in which we have to climb up a bunch of rocks. Yeah, it's um, it is a pretty thrilling run, no doubt. And at first glance, the first the first thing you see about this level is pure speed. The stage is really fast paced. I mean, it's got a little bit a lot of nooks and crannies on the platform in the stage is very blocky. However, you will need to really be on your toes at the stage because there are enemies that come out of nowhere just to just to annihilate you. They'll literally come out of nowhere. You get you get little signs to indicate oh there's an enemy. And you got these little spots as well where you can hang on the ceilings and walls of things like for there to dodge enemy attacks. So really you need to just manage when you need to go faster when you go slow in a stage which is something I'm not really particularly good at because I tend to either go really fast or really slow I'm never good at managing the two but um, the music oh my god the music is fantastic but the stage features a lot of spikes and a lot of enemies that will take pot shots at you and well to be fair a lot of the enemies in this game in general tend to take a lot of pot shots at you but I digress, that's Act 1 cleared. Very simple act, very easy going to go through. Skip it, bap bap! Spoop it, bap bap! I can never do that. I don't know, what do they say in that um, outro theme? Oh, who knows? But yeah, anybody who's played Sonic Colors and uh, loved the. Uh, oh, what's the zone called? It's the candy zone with all the hamburgers and stuff. Um, Sweet Mountain Zone, that's the one. Anybody who loved that zone will love the music in this zone because the music, it, it gives off the same sort of feel. I mean, it's similar sort of jazzy, upbeat, bounce, bounce, down sort of music. And I like it, I really do. Although, while moving through the stage, you're gonna wanna try and collect as many rings as possible. And whenever you see those little purple bannocks that you just saw me kill, try your best to jump as soon as you see them because they will instantly, as soon as they get a chance, Try and annihilate you. Now that flying bandic I just killed, they are very annoying as well because you need to watch out for them because if you try and do a platform, the way this game physics are, work is if you hit someone from underneath, like a bandic from underneath them, you will be shot right downwards like a rocket. So gravity will basically go tenfold and it, it will mess up your platforming mojo and I don't I don't think I died in this run of the level from Jumping underneath them, but in my first place of the stage. Oh my god instantaneous death although You might think though because as you can see in the background there's a lot of clouds underneath the mountains You might think there's a uh, quite a few bottomless pits in this level Believe it or not, they're not There's actually quite a few bot quite few bottomless pits, there's not many at all, which means you're pretty free to speed along and run through quite carelessly. There are, I think there is one bottomless pit in this level in, in total, I'm not entirely sure about that. But um, yeah, you can pretty much be as reckless as possible with your speed, don't worry too much about dropping downwards. And ah, it's a moonwalking action there for you. So if you were um, at the top of the screen and you fall down, chances are the only outcome of that is you'll have to climb back up to the way you fell. That's, that seems to be the only major obstacle, although in a way I kind of prefer dying, because then it instantly respawns you. Sure, it loses a life, but I, you get plenty of lives anyway. I mean, every hundred rings, Bob's your uncle. Act 3, though, is where the level becomes extremely vertical. The, the majority of this act is basically climbing. You've got to climb your way up, you've got to be like Sonic the Hedgehog, you've got to speed your way as fast through. And I don't think you actually see much of Sonic climbing in the series. I mean, you see plenty of him falling. Actually, every I think nearly every 3D game to date has him as a scene where he falls flat on his face. So. Yeah, he's not, he's not the best climber, which means he's actually quite slippery, so just take your time and watch out because those pot shop bannocks, as I'm now dubbing them, are a real menace. They will... As if they've seen you once, they, they can shoot you off screen. Also, these are fly, flying bannocks as well. They kind of act... they kind of double as like a buzz bomber from Sonic the Hedgehog 1, which are basically those flies that shoot lasers at you. So... Think of them as fast versions of the Lord Bannocks. 
But anyway, like I said, we're gonna climb as vertically as possible. Watch enough for these flying guys, because I, I cannot stress enough how annoying they are. And it's always very annoying whenever you're just about to make a perfect jump and it's suddenly, oh, no, I just fell. And then you have to do it all over again. But I digress. Although the, the park shot guys are really annoying as well. Just pay attention to the signs though, because otherwise you may get lost. The signs will roughly point you in the right direction, and you'll see a couple of signs throughout. Now this by you confused me, because I thought there was a hidden passage here. It's... it... actually it is. No way, is it? Yeah, there's a hidden passage here. So if you want to get yourself an extra life and speed up shoes, feel free to go into that wall. Although what you're meant to do, which confused me is when I was recording this, you're actually meant to drop down right before the, that secret wall is, so there we go. Drop down and keep moving on as fast as you can. I can't, I can't stress the music, the music's brilliant. <laughs> but um, with that, we're at the end of the zone. And like I said, I'm only showing off the first two special stages. The rest of the special stages in this game are just gonna be flat out skipped. So any second now you're gonna see a cross fade into the end where I think I I think I got one. Yeah, I got one extra life in the special stage, so yay me! Fastest thing alive, son. And I do love this cutscene. It really reminds me of Sonic CD's intro. And to be fair, Sonic CD intro, I'm, I guess I'm not the biggest fan of Sonic CD as a whole, but the intro I think is fantastic, and that ominous device for aficionados of the series will recognize, that is the Death Egg, folks. That is what we're stretching to destroy. Dr. Eggman wants to enslave the entire world using this thing, and yeah, it's basically a Death Star from Star Wars, I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty much exactly the same. but. I don't know what exactly it does. I think it's like a giant roboticizer that's meant to like enslave the world with robots into robots, but I could be wrong. Anyway, boss fight number three. Now this boss fight is actually quite simple, but you've got two phases to it. But he's gonna continue shooting dragon um, fangs or whatever they're called, which is basically attacks a slide across the ground, but for the first phase you wanna attack the blue spot a couple of times. Now, as you hit him more and more, his laser attacks are going to get faster and faster. So, just um, be careful. Once the blue thing's gone, now you'll be free to completely aim for his cockpit and just annihilate him. But like I said, watch out, he gets really fast with his attacks. You need to be nippy. You it's like you're playing a Sonic game, you gotta be fast. I never would have guessed that. But of course, the boss still goes down fairly easy. It's not the hardest boss fight in the world. Now let's move on to Tails' section. Now that's a, that's a little thing that uh, I'd like to mention. You will notice that Tails sort of... The game goes in a formula like Sonic level, then Tails level, Sonic level, then Tails level. And it kind of... It's a nice way to really break things up because Sonic levels tend to be the faster, get to the end, gotta go fast stages. While Tails levels seem to be a little slower, a little more platforming focused. And um... Yeah, this zone by here is actually quite special, I must say. Because what we're currently in is, um, I believe this is meant to be a recreation of Hidden Palace. And yes, that Bannock just did a Hadouken. That, um, we're fighting Street Fighter robots here. See, Tat... What's that? Tatsusim... The ta oh, the Whirlwind Kick. You know the, that one. I always forget what it's called. But, um, be careful. The Hadouken guys really are annoying enemies, but... Like I said, this is pr this is meant to be a uh, hidden palace zone, and if you know from the stage name, it's it's called Lost Level Zone. Well, all the stages that well, three of the stages that didn't actually make it into Sonic 2 and were scrapped from the final game are this zone. Each each act is a different stage. So Act One is Hidden Palace, which we're going into now, and though you won't probably won't be able to tell at first, this. The music playing right now is actually a remix of the Hidden Palace theme from um, Sonic 2, which I know is the Hidden Palace theme because you, if you cheat on the game cartridge using like a Game Genie, you can actually enter the remains of Hidden Palace on the cartridge. It's a broken mess. I'm not gonna lie, the, car the Hidden Palace on the game cartridge itself is a broken mess. So don't bother doing that. If you want to play Hidden Palace on on Sonic 2. Get the iOS version of Sonic 2 made by the tax man. I think this guy made it. Because um, he's basically recreated the whole zone and put it back in. 
But um, yeah, it's not. This stage is quite unique, and it's got these diamonds that have sort of anti-gravity effects. I can't really work my way around them though, because they, they don't. Their physics seem to be a little weird, because sometimes you go into them and they'll boost you up, but other times nothing will happen. I don't understand these things, but it's short level overall. It's quite a nice throwback to Sonic 2's Hidden Palace. And the next level is actually where things get a bit more interesting. And the next level, there's a couple of theories I've read online about this level, which is um, this is the wood zone from Sonic 2. And I've heard a couple of theories that this used to be like uh, Metropolis Pass. Like, for a lot of you that don't know, Sonic 2 was originally designed to play like Sonic CD. It was originally had the time travel mechanic. But eventually that got moved over to Sonic CD for the Mega CD, or Sega CD, depending on which country you live in. And, um, a lot, one of the major fan theories that I've read online, I don't know if it's even a theory, it might actually be real, but. This was originally meant to be Metropolis Zone in the past. I don't know if it is, but either way, I love this music track. Dun, dun. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what this track's a remix of, but I know it's a remix of something, and it is a good song that it's a remix of. It's got, someone please comment in the comments below so I can slap myself. So I'm gonna read someone's comment, like, oh, this is a remix of this song. Oh, yeah! But anyway, those uh, whirlwind kick bannocks have invincibility frames, and this is a trend you'll see a lot with um, this game in particular. A lot of the bannocks will have invincibility frames, you cannot hurt them, which means while they're using a certain attack, you can't hurt them at all, so if you have invincibility, you'll just walk straight, straight through them, you won't blow them up. And it, it's... Not really annoying, but it's something to make note of, because some of you might just stand in front of a bannock like, Ooh, why can't I hurt him, bros? <laughs> but, again, this stage isn't too long. This is more of a, like, vertical shaft of a level with a bit of horizontal gameplay. What I mean by that is you're basically going up, then across, then down, then across, then up. So like in a zigzag motion to get across the end of the stage, and it works, it works. It's a lot better than, um, it's a lot more better designed than the wood zone in Sonic the Hedgehog 2 long version, which is a ROM hack of Sonic 2 that re-adds some of the old removed zones and completely builds what someone would imagine certain zones would be like, like genocide slash cyber city zone. But I digress, let's just continue moving onwards. Stage, very beautiful. Most of these graphics are taken directly from Sonic 2, by the way. Like, all the leaves and the actual wood platforms themselves are from Sonic 2. The trees in the background are originally original artwork, though, so I guess it's that. Although, now the next zone is the one I'm looking forward to talking to them. Talking to? Yeah, so I'm gonna talk to the level. Level, speak to me. No, the next zone is something I can't wait to talk about, because this is Dust Hill Zone. Which originally was meant to be two zones. It's meant to have Winter Zone and Dust Hill Zone, both a level that you switch into all the time between the zones. So it was like it was a dynamic zone. And where you go to certain areas, it'll be cold. You go to other areas, it'll be warm. And remember the other, the last part where I mentioned, oh, I love dynamic soundtracks. Well, this game actually has a good dynamic soundtrack with this. Like. For example, when you're in the desert area of this zone, well, this, this act, basically you have a little bit more of a rocky, guitar-y sort of sounding music. And while you're in the ice zone, the ice area, the music will sound a bit more, you know, chill. <laughs> chill, get it? And uh, a bit more relaxed. And I like it. I always like this sort of thing. Although, that's, that's a, a very rare burst of speed I got from Tails. And I rarely go that fast when I'm running normally. Like, Tails' uh, top speed in this game is a lot, and I mean a lot, slower than Sonic's, so, you know, there's that. But yeah, the, the artwork actually kind of, in the background actually kind of reminds me a lot of um, Ice Cap Zone from Sonic 2. And an interesting tip I don't see many people know about, which this also works in the original Sonic the Hedgehog games as well, is when you're going on a loop, while you're reaching the corner heading downwards, if you jump at the perfect time, you get a perfect boost of speed. Now this boost of speed will basically send you flying. It 
basically shoots you but slightly faster than your top speed normally. And it's a nice speedrunning tactic if you're ever into speedrunning. But with that, there's that. Just jump in this special ring and it's time to finish up Dust Hill, not Dust Hill, the last level zone. Ooh la la. Also notice how we have 10 lives, oh 11 lives now, okay. Um, I think in the next part is where I have my break, so the next part I think we'll, <laughs> we'll be back down to 3. But this boss boy is actually a pretty awesome boss, cause... It's basically, this isn't really an original boss idea, but it's, it's done a bit better than Sonic Colors. Basically this boss is identical to a similar boss you fight twice in Sonic Colors. Where you, you're in this giant ferris wheel and the weak point is dead in the center. All you have to do is dodge the lasers that the spike ball shoots out. And jump on the platforms and hit the middle pod. Once you hit the middle pod enough, it will blow up and you'll win. Occasionally the lasers that um, the spike ball will shoot out will turn yellow. When they turn yellow, it's your opportunity to jump into them. Because then you'll gain yourself a free ring. Which... Isn't required, but um, it's very useful because it's so easy to get hit in the stage and just mess up. Make very good use of Tails' flying though, because you can basically use Tails' flying to jump on a platform and make sure you're safe from the lasers. Tails' flying is basically the ultimate tool to get to areas that you need to go. For example, if you don't want to mess with the physics, use his flight, etc. etc. But with that now, folks, I'm gonna call it apart so thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed if you enjoyed i appreciate a like or comment to the video don't be sheepish people i'll see you all next time when we take on the next two zones thanks for watching see you then bye i love the blue screen for that as well